At 6 p.m. this afternoon, the government of Trinidad and Tobago was overthrown. The Prime Minister and members of the Cabinet are under arrest. We are asking everybody to remain calm. The revolutionary forces are commanded to control the streets. Good evening, everyone. 32 years ago, those were the images flashed across our screens. On TTT, the lonely channel, the only TV station in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago at the time. Today, 27 July 2022, we observe 32 years since that dreaded day. It is not a time to celebrate, but it's a time to reflect. A day like today forces us to question where were we, where we were, where we are, and as a nation, where are we going? Tonight, I speak to the man at the center of the insurrection at the time at 6 p.m. when on his feet, the parliament was breached and the gunmen stormed into the Parliament Chamber. Tonight I'm joined by former Minister and Member of Parliament for Toko Mantanilla, Mr. Joseph Tony, who will tell us his experience and tell us his feelings then and now, and how can we learn from that experience as we go forward. Good evening, Mr. Tony. Good evening, uh, Shane. Good evening to you and good evening to all your viewers, uh, those who are viewing and those who are online listening. Um, it's a pleasure for you to uh, have me uh, as your guest uh, this, this evening. And I look forward to our discussion on those eventful deeds. I, I have uh, to say thank, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, I think a day like today it brings you no joy and uh, i am sure the memories of that uh, infamous day still flashes through your mind so tell me of course of course it, 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 it will never leave me i, I don't take um, those of us who uh, experience uh, uh, those moments uh, that those uh, uh, feelings will never go away it will always be there it was not uh, go in and buy a, 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 a box of raw cast of chicken or uh, go into the beach you know, the night, the beach to have an evening out. You know. It was a most traumatic experience uh, for me and for the people who I've spoken to who were uh, uh, involved and who were held hostage, or even not hostages, but people who were on the outside. It was a very uh, uh, frightening and horrible uh, uh, experience to undergo. Um, so tell me, let's dive straight into it. You are on your, you are on your feet. You are making yes. your contribution uh, in the parliament. Yes. And yes. The, Dr. Anselm St. George, the member of parliament for San Fernando West, is in yes. the chair as the deputy speaker. He um, is. Tell me what happens next. Well, as I said, I was on my feet. I think we had um, the, 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 the PNM, we had them with their backs against the wall because we were debating uh, the proceeds uh, that the government received from uh, the corruption of the Tesoro, the, Tesoro, the sale of Tesoro, Tesoro share. We have mm -hmm. just recovered a, a good judgment from the courts in Texas, a uh, uh, sizable sum of money. And we were uh, lambasting the PNM uh, on, on all their corrupt ways, which of course hasn't really changed. <laughs> and we, <laughs> we, we were we were we were we were we, we were debating, and um, I heard this. Um, well, I mean, you, you you have the episode of the who is your leader thing, but the who is your leader thing had really had nothing to do with the most need. Uh, or, or anything of the sort. I was just given some some pecan mm -hmm. to uh, 
my friends up with it, Mr. Sudam, uh, I think Mr. Ramnath, uh, Mr. Humphrey, because at that time, they had been in the throes of forming the UNC, and they were quarreling all over Trinidad and Tobago about who should be the leader of, of, of the UNC. And I asked him then, well, well, who's your leader? <laughs> that is how it came about. It had nothing to do with him with me. Um, so yes, I was talking. Um, we were, we were really uh, uh, laid it onto the beer. And um, I heard these chaps running in, uh, something to me like uh, 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 some vagrant on the outside, you know, pulling a pan. Because before I came into politics, I saw a vagrant pulling a, 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 a look like to me like a, a tin cup. And he was making a lot of noise pulling the tin cup. And I thought it was him. And then I saw these military people dressed in military garb. And I said, my God, this is a, a military takeover. I thought that the army had taken over. The, 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 the army had come to take over the country and they would take over the parliament. And um, then I heard the, the, the Islamic chants. Allahu Akbar, what is great, Allahu Akbar. I said, my God, uh, this, is, this, is the, this is the most unique, you know. And, um, well, of course, you know, I saw cover. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has seen that. I was seeking cover, trying to protect myself from, from the bullets. And I, I always say that I have to thank God, thank the Almighty, that um, I did not, I left the Parliament of August the first without a scratch. And, and that has to be divine intervention. But you know, I'm a tall man. I am over six feet. Mm -hmm. And standing up there talking with these bullets flying left, right, and center, uh, none clash with me. <laughs> I mean, say so. Not a bullet uh, struck me. For example, like we had the unfortunate experience of Mr. Leo Dean. He was sitting and he got shot in his ankle. And because he was diabetic and didn't get medical attention on time, unfortunately he died some days afterwards. So there I was, a tall man talking, and all these bullets, they're shooting up the parliament because, of course, that's the, the modus of these terrorists. They shoot it up and they scare you, and then they calm you down. So that's what they did. They shut up the place. Uh, uh, they made sure that everybody was covering in fear. And then they announced that they were in, they are in control. Uh, so, so, so that was about the first, I would say, 15, 20 minutes of, of the Friday evening. Uh, after that, of course, um, terror began, began and brutalizing. Mr. Robinson, uh, Mr. Selwyn Richards, viciously and inhumanely and almost uh, in a barbaric fashion, you know, they tied them up and beat them and, you know, <coughs> really, really um, 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 heavily uh, inflicted some heavy, heavy a heavy, heavy beating on them. And I always tell uh, um, uh, uh, my friends, whoever I speak to about this, that um, it was during that time, especially during the, 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 the events of July 1990, that I saw how courageous and how um, dedicated Mr. Robinson was to his um, political responsibilities as leader of Trinidad and Tobago. Not for one moment, uh, Dr. Shea, not for one moment during those six days did Mr. Robinson bow, did he surrender, did he give up on Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, it could have been easy for him to say, well, it's okay. You fellows want the country, take the country, give me safe passage out, me and my family, uh, as 
other leaders have done in other countries and gone about his business. No, he did not do that. He told them squarely and frankly that, well, of course, you know his famous words, that was mm -hmm. but he also told them that he was quite prepared. He was prepared to die in Trinidad. And he kept on saying that all along, even though he was being beaten, even though he was uh, slapped around, even though he was being uh, gone butted, that I, I shall die for Trinidad. I am prepared to die for Trinidad. And I think that, um, if I may say so, that, but I felt very, very proud and I thought that, you know, this man really, really standing up for Trinidad today. Of course, other people had different views about that. If, if some people said it was suicide, and I didn't think so at all. Uh, certainly, he gave me courage. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, they, they, they went on. And, and I think that the Muslim, um, they, I think, were a bit taken aback by Mr. Robinson's I think you might have gone, um, you might have put yourself on mute. Yeah. What, how, how did they really thought that he would just surrender. And, and, and he didn't. He didn't surrender. And I think that Trinidad and Tobago owes him a, a, a huge debt of gratitude. I know that politically afterwards he did certain things that didn't, uh, uh, sit well with many folks, but I think that during those moments, he really, really um, batted and batted well for Trinidad and Tobago, and I, I commend him for it. I uh, agree I with said, you. It, it inspired me a lot. I, I me fully lot agree. It made, me, it made me feel that I have a leader who is standing in front, who is leading from in front, who is showing the way and who is telling us, all of us, don't serve it. All right. Let's take a break on that note, and we come back, and then we will discuss um, what happened in the days that followed within the chamber. Uh, we of take course. a break, and we, be, we, we will we'll be right back. Hello. This is Dr. Shane Mohammed, geopolitical scientist and lecturer. I invite you to join me for a new exciting show on IETV 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. The Real Politique is not an ordinary talk show, but one of education, enlightenment, and examination. Here we discuss not just the surface issues, but the factors, shortcomings, and lack of will to change the socio-economic and political realities facing our nation. We ask the hard questions, seek out the difficult answers, whilst at the same time creating a space for dialogue and discussion which all of society can learn, understand, and hopefully respond actively and for the greater good of the Republic. This is the Real Politik. And welcome back. Uh, you know, excuse me if my tongue gets tied during the course of our program tonight. It's a very intense conversation. And um, I can tell you from personal experience that uh, Dr. Anselm St. George was the deputy speaker, but he was also my mother's boss during the time uh, that he was a member of parliament. And I have a personal experience. So I want to share this with Mr. Tony. Mr. Tony, when you all were released and um, yes. you all had gone to Hilton, I remember yes. um, when we had gotten to the opportunity to go and visit um, my, my mother um, and I and my father, when we went up to see Dr. St. George, um, he had a lot of bruises on his knees and on his shins. Yes. And what had happened, yes. he had said to us that, that he did not get those injuries from the from being in the parliament but what had happened was that he was in his hotel room and he was look the tv was on and yes. the trauma of what had happened in yes. the in, in the chamber um there yes. was there was a show that had gunshots and from hearing those gunshots 
he um, yes. automatically tried to get underneath the, the, the hotel bed yes. Um, yes. In, in, a, in an, an attempt to escape because he would have thought that they had, they, it was not over, that they were coming at the, at the Hilton. Now, yes. you know, tell me, so you all stayed there till August 1st, and in, yes. in Mr. Dukaran's tell-all, I was privileged as well to sit with him and get his story. Um, because they had pulled him out as the as and he became the main negotiator um, between the, the government and the insurrectionists. But what was happening in the chambers uh, in the in the days that superseded the twenty seventh? So from the twenty eighth to twenty ninth, all the way till your yes. this was over, I should say. What what was happening yes. within the chamber? Well, let me, let me let me say, and I saw uh, an article in today's newspaper where uh, um, I think it's Mr. Ralph Brown. I, I can't remember the Ralph. I don't want to disrespect him. I think it's Brigadier Ralph Brown was, was, was given his take on it after many years. And he was saying that from about 8 p.m. on the Friday night, as far as the military was concerned, the coup was over. And, well, of course, we were under the gun. Uh, you don't know if you will come out of this thing alive. And you, you were very worried, you know, whether, whether, whether you could live the next five minutes or the next 10 minutes or what would happen. But I sensed as well that by Midnight of the Friday, uh, that's the first day of the coup, that the Muslim men would defeat. Uh, they were cornered. There was nowhere for them to go. And I think we have to give kudos to the military strategists, uh, whether they be the police or the defense force who were able to lock them into the Red House and lock them into the TTT without any access to the outside world and really uh, get them to a position where they too wanted to go. So that I think you know, by midnight on the Friday night, even though you know there was sporadic gunfire at the at the at the red house well, at the red house. Um, sometimes the, the shooting would be so rapid and fierce you would think that they were going to blow up the red house and blow up everybody in, you know mm -hmm. but when i came back outside i was told that they were doing that to strike fear into the people at the red house to let them know that they had heavier uh, 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 artillery. Uh, uh, they had they had better weaponry and stronger weaponry than they had, and that it was only a matter of time before uh, they, 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 they they would be ultimately defeated. So I got a sense, and right, but then of course. The Muslim um, would not go away easily, and they they struck fear in all of us, mm -hmm. you know, and started talking about the, the, the amnesty, getting the documents and so on, <coughs> and having everybody uh, resign, and they would form a new government, and they would back Mr. Dukarangi, the Prime Minister and Abu Bakr wanted to be the Minister of National Security. A lot of, a lot of uh, nonsense, really. But when a fellow has a gun pointed to your head, or to your crutch, or to your back, or to your neck, and he tells you, well, listen, I want um, Bakr to be Minister of National Security. What do you tell him? <laughs> or you resign. What do you tell him? You know, 
you comply. Mm -hmm. um, because a man has a gun pointed to your head, as I said, have it pointed to your mouth, pointed to your chest, you know, pointed to all parts of your body. And on top of that, you had these massive, uh, uh, heavy gunfire, uh, mashing up windows, hitting the walls, and so on, and the results, which um, really, really would, would shake up anybody. But at, you really were in, do, uh, in, in a war zone. During the course <laughs> of that period as well, you would have heard the explosion to, uh, of the car driving into the police headquarters and that, that ex particular explosion. You all would have been witness to hearing that as well. Well, we, that, that would have been earlier. Um, um, when, when we were being um, sort of, um, when, when we were being put under arrest, under, shall I say, under manners, <laughs> as it were, uh, within the first 15 to 20 minutes, you have heard the, 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 the bombing of the car outside at the police headquarters. So that, as well, uh, added to uh, the, the, the trauma and the fear and the fright that uh, we all would have experienced. And of course, it, it, it gave the, the, the most mean a, a, a superior uh, psychological advantage over us because we really were in the dark. Yeah. We didn't know what we, and we were just about our business in the bottom. So there was no real, and, uh, so the communication that was happening between, well, we know that Abu Bakr never entered into the Red House at all, right? So it was, uh, it was no, Bilal Abdullah no. who was leading the charge in, in, in the Red House. But... He, yes, Bilal Abdullah, yes. The, the, the communication that was happening between the Red House and the TTT, between, uh, yes, yes. between the insurrectionists, you all were just being given, um, it was really like a stalemate then for you all inside of there. Yes. It was like a wait and see. It was. It was. It was. It was, it was a stalemate, I would say it was a thing. But uh, they were talking, um, I got a sense, I don't know if it was true or not, that they were talking to one another uh, uh, by telephone. In those days, of course, they had cellular telephones and, and, and smartphones and so on have now. But they were talking to one another by phone. And uh, I think that um, Bilal Abdullah would, would, would be taking instructions from, from um, uh, Abu Bakr on, 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 on what should be done next or what shouldn't be done next. So um, clearly, they were in communication one with the other. Um, you know, years have passed by, and you, yes. you all, all of you all, in fact, um, who were in the parliament, who stood up for democracy, uh, we've, yes. well, we've honored Dr. We've honored uh, Mr. Robertson while he was alive, um, and I think rightfully so. But, and yes. you know, but you, there are many of you, including yourself. Um, Mr. Devines, who, has, who, who, who passed, um, you all are really unsung heroes that a generation, it is a generation of, of, and the reason why I chose to do this particular program tonight is because there's a generation of young people in our society who doesn't yes. have an appreciation as to yes. Yes. what, had, what yes. really yes. happened. I think you're quite correct because um, Moving around, you know, I, 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 I go around all over the country, I, I, I walk around, I drive around, I, and there are lots and lots of young people, I think, let us say the age group of probably uh, those who are under 27. Yeah. 27, yeah, who just don't know about these events. You know, people point out, they say, you know, this is the chap who was, um, who was talking when they went out back at the parliament. They say, oh, what, 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 happened, what, what, what happened there? You know, mm -hmm. they don't know, you know. And I find that most um, unnerving, you know, that an event like that, which, if successful, would have rocked our democratic traditions, is so casually um, dismissed, you know, so casually overlooked. And I agree and with I you. Think that, um, that that is, is is sad, and it is very very unfortunate. Um, I am not looking to be any hero or to get any medal at my chest. 
But at the same time, I think that there ought to be some sort of recognition of the, uh, Mr. Wendell Eversley. I think he's probably walked out. He's walked off about probably about 10 or 12 pairs of shoes, walking from Arima to, to, to Port of Spain on July, July 27th every year, trying to see if he can get the authorities to, to, <coughs> to do something about this thing so that all young people who aspire to be parliamentarians would know of and who, who, who follow our politics and who are civic minded in any way would know that this is something that happened. And um, our parliament was under serious threat. Yeah. It's not happening. And, and, and I think that um, if we continue like this, without us remembering, you know, these events and the toll that it took on the country and uh, the direction that the country could have gone into had it been successful and had not, uh, not only the parliamentarians, but the military mm -hmm. stood up. Then, I, you know, where, where, where are we really going? I agree. Where are we really going, you know? You know, and I, I always take the point, um, uh, Ashid, look at how the Americans treat the September... 11, uh, September 11. 11. But what we could yeah. also, we look at how right now they are treating January 6th. And that's a, 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 that one is a, a direct example because their yes. parliament was breached they, and they are not they, taking they are, that very they, easily. They are, they are making, they're not making joke with their democracy and their... Congress and the the House of the House of Representatives and the Parliament and so on, they treat that very 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 serious. Agree. You know, <laughs> and for the for the um for the the, the September eleventh, the, the September the 9 11, event, It's a huge, you know, you huge, know, huge. You know, you know what? You know what strikes me? <laughs> you know what I I, I I find it hilarious sometimes that um. The American embassy, and I think they, they give instructions to all the embassies all over the world, they must have an event to let the world know that they conquered terrorism on September, September, September 9th, it is? September 11th. 9-11. Oh, yeah. And they have, a, a, I think, in Trinidad, they have one here, the ambassador. Yes, they, they, they do. They do. Did. And all of our parliamentarians, they put on their fancy clothes and they get their wives all dressed up and they go up there with the American ambassador and tell them how much they appreciate the democratic traditions of America and terrorists must not be able to conquer um, the democracy and so on. But right here in Trinidad, right here in Trinidad, Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. But Mr. Your Tony, was I, under severe attack. Mr. Tony, the, the thing about it is your military, your military succeeded, and not a single word. Well, you not see, not a single, yeah, not a, not a, not a, not a drum is in the, Because you, you like we are not dealing, we are dealing with a group of, of of politicians and parliamentarians that one very. If, if none of them presently in the, cur in the current complement of parliamentarians witnessed 1990 in terms of were ever present, were not present there, I think the, in the last administration in between two, 2010 and 2015, it was really Mr. Dukaran. I guess they, they, they don't understand what, what parliamentarians do. If it is that you are a good student of history, <laughs> You would go and, and read about it. But we don't have readers. We also don't have readers. And we have so a very superficial would, group of well, people. This is something that we have to take very seriously. I want to take a break. And when we come back, I want to talk okay. about, I want to ask you a particular question that I had posed to Mr. Dukaran. And when we come back, we, I want to also start talking about, in the, in, the, in the 20 minutes we have, I want to talk about the Commission of Inquiry. So we'll be right back. Hello. This is Dr. Shane Mohammed, geopolitical scientist and lecturer. I invite you to join me for a new exciting show on IETV 
8 p.m. on Wednesdays. The Real Politique is not an ordinary talk show, but one of education, enlightenment, and examination. Here we discuss not just the surface issues, but the factors, shortcomings, and lack of will to change the socio-economic and political realities facing our nation. We ask the hard questions, seek out the difficult answers, whilst at the same time creating a space for dialogue and discussion which all of society can learn, understand, and hopefully respond actively and for the greater good of the Republic. This is the Real Politique. Dolly's Place, a home for the aged. Our home care facility offers quality care for your loved ones. Our focus is providing exceptional services by people who truly care in an environment that promotes healing and wellness. Ideally located in Presal, we provide professional medical visits, nurse care, and clinical appointments. Living accommodation, companionship, and entertainment with 24-hour, 7-day supervision. We are passionate about serving the best food in style. Everyone knows our manager, Petra. At Dolly's Place, professionalism is the name of the game. Welcome back. We just want to say thank you so much to Dolly's Place for sponsoring uh, our show tonight. Um, it shows the importance of our democracy and why <coughs> democracy is, is, is important to, to every state and to, for people of our country to understand the importance of their democratic rights. Mr. Tony, I need to ask you this question because I put it to Mr. Nipper yes. and I want to put it to you as well. Um, should the order have been given to kill Mr. to kill the Imam uh, when uh, Prime Minister Robinson said attack with full force? Should it also mm -hmm. include an order to kill him? Should it have also? I think, should it have also included an order from the Prime Minister to the military to kill Abu Bakr? Mm -hmm. I am, I am not following your question. Okay, please, so please. in saying attack with full force, should he also, yes. should the Prime Minister had given and had also given, should he had given an order to kill Mr. Barker? But I think implicit in the order was that. But um, he did, it didn't happen. If you're, given, if, if, if you're given the military an order to attack with full force, I mean, they say soldiers don't attack with full force and bring you back in hand, of so bring you back, uh, uh, uh. You, you, you're in a war. Exactly. So implicit, implicit in the order to attack with full force. I think Mr. Robinson was saying, listen, shoot them away. And um, as we say in the, in the, in the, in the, in the countryside, que sera, sera? Agreed. You know what? Yes. Um, 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 you know the saying, who went dead, badly wounded. Yeah, you know? I, I, and, and I... So that, 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 that is what, that is what, that is what, um, that is what uh, in, in, implicitly in the order to attack with full force. Are you that disappointed? That is what Mr. Robinson was saying. Are you I disappointed? The Muslim, mean, the Muslim mean was shocked by, by that, that statement. I agree. Because they, they, they thought that, as I said, they thought that we would all cower Yes. Uh, resign, yes. put up our tears between our legs and go home and allow them to run through that. Do you feel disappointed? Mr. Tony, do you feel disappointed? Are you disappointed yeah. that that these these fellas were not uh, were not retried for treason and hanged or faced the death penalty? Well I mean the the the, 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 the Privy Council said that they should have been retried. And that did I, I, I was I was more disappointed with the the, the Trinidad and Tobago courts because I could not fathom how a court of law could uphold that amnesty. Correct. Which was under duress given birth to in those circumstances. People signed those documents. People sign those documents with guns to their heads, and in t with and, and also with the also with the underlying factor that they held the lives of others in their hands. 
So they were under yes. duress. And, and they, were, they were just making more and more demands all the time. You know, people signed those documents with guns to their head. I, I was there. I witnessed it. I saw it myself. Yeah. I myself signed with a gun to my head. You know, say that? a gun to your crutch, a gun to your chest. So that, <coughs> um, so I, I couldn't understand how the Trinidad and Tobago courts could say, well, listen, this is a good document. Let those fellows. Are we so better off? Council, the Privy Council looked at it and said, listen, no, 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 no. There was clear duress here. Um, but it is too late. Um, you know, it, it would take too much effort to rearrest the 141 and have the prosecuted. And so you must let bygones be bygones. Unfortunately. But, <coughs> They got away on a technicality, and that's 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 the law. Do you? And, you know, I'm a lawyer. I, I I have to live with it. Well, uh, but they committed some very 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 heinous crimes. Wrong I agree. Against so many people in Trinidad and, and caused so much uh, destruction, untold destruction. And for what? <laughs> you know, when when we were in the in the red house. Bilal Abdullah, I knew him at St. Louis College. Uh, he was a, a, a math student, a very good, very good math student. But he was also he was also good at chess. You might still know him playing chess at St. Mary's College. Uh, but I knew him as a good math student. And uh, he was commanding the troops, their troops at the Red House. And he was very precise and very uh, calculated in all that he said. That he and uh, we got around to talking. Uh, at the time, and I have to ask him. I say, well, this, where are you going with this? Where exactly are you going with this? I said, even if you kill all of us and you take over the government, they would not even recognize your government in Tobago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where are you going? <laughs> where are you? Where are you going with this? With, with this nonsense, you know? And I think that. You know, he, even after the events of July 99, you know, he distanced himself a lot from the, from the, uh, yes, his, yes, he did. His gang. Yes. Yes. But I think maybe he, 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 he got sense, you know, that, well, you know, I said, you, you just bring in untold hardship to Trinidadians and Tobiconians. I said, the Americans won't stand for this. No Caribbean country is going to recognize you. Uh, where are you going? What is what is going to happen? You, you you might achieve something by killing us all and so on. But what's going to happen to Trinidad and Tobago? He couldn't answer. And he's a brilliant chap. He couldn't answer. I said, you know, this is just this is just a waste of time. You know, waste of energy. You know. So I think that um, <coughs> eventually they all realized that they will. On, on, on a very, very uh, stupid frolic, silly exercise that would take neither them or the country anyway. And I think that this, at that time, they started ensuring, ensuring that um, they come out of their life. And they secure their freedom. And, and I beg your pardon? And that they secure their freedom. And that they secure their freedom. Do you think? And I think that part of this part of the strategy of of letting uh, Mr. Robinson out was that they felt, you know, you know, it, it, it's a strange thing. Those sixties, eh? they came in there hating Robinson with a passion, mm -hmm. hating Mr. Robinson with a passion. By the time they were allowing Mr. Robinson to go, to leave, they were hoping and praying that Mr. Robinson would remain alive. And pardon them. To save them. <laughs> you know, so, because, because they, 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 they remember that this thing was dragging out from day to day, day to day. day, day, day. When I came up out at the military, people told me that that was a strategy to starve them, yes. to wear them down, to yes. wear them down. But they didn't understand that. And they already thought that they were being set up for a final assault uh, by the military upon them. And the only person 
who could have prevented that assault in their mind was Mr. Roberts. I get you on that. So, so, they, so, they, so, so they said, let's, let him go out and see if he could talk to those fellas outside there who were, 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 were cock a hoop and wanted to simply um, 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 kill them all um, because of what they did to the country. Do so you? They, 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 they started off hating him, and in the end, they were protecting him. Hoping to God that he lived so that they could go free. So that they can go free. So that they can go free. So you know. Do you, I think that was the do you think we're better off today than we were in 1990? In no, light no, of the... no. I say, that, I say that absolutely. I say that absolutely. You see, one of the dangers in the, in the, in the freeing of the, of the Muslim League was that they came back out into the society cock a hoop. Yes. You know, they, 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 <coughs> they walk with their chests in very his... proud yes. for the speaking. Yes. You know, they were wearing their, their, their Muslim garb. And their, the red hats. Their, 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 yes, they, yes, and the military shoes and their, 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 their I don't know the name of it, their, their, their long uh, The jubbas. The jubbas. Yeah. I don't know what they call it. The jubbas. They call it A jubba. Yes. And the topi, but that's not an ordinary topi, but mm -hmm. it's, a, it's more of a, a symbolic, the red headdress is more of a symbolic, uh, uh, yes. uni, unifying so kind they, of. They, and remember when they came up, oh, they were couple of and, and they, they, a lot of people saw them as heroes. They bought the system and they walked away free. Hmm. And, um, I think that Abu Bakr in particular um, thrived on it. Oh, yes, and he did. He, 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 went, he, he went into a, a massive recruitment drive. And um, more and more young people came around him. But I don't know if, if they came around him because they wanted to be better Muslim. Or just needed you know? help. Or they needed help. Uh, because what what you got was that they they, they 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 became they became more they became bolder empowered and and yes and, and they, became, they became more strident in making sure that wherever they went whatever they did um the authorities would turn a blind eye to yes and, and the thing about, do you think that, do you think now that Mr. Baka has passed, do you think that um, so did the organization of, 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 of that kind of military styling of followers, do you think that has, that, that died with him? I wouldn't say it has died with him. I think there are still those in the Muslim who would want to uh, revive those days. In and, 2022? Um, I beg your pardon? Revive those days in 2022 when we are, I mean, if you look at the, the, the Commission of Inquiry, yeah, well, Chapter no, 12. When I say revive those days, revive those days when they had all this sway. Well, they don't um, have sway um, anymore. Throughout Trinidad and Tobago. But I don't think the military will allow it. Eh? I, think, um, I think the military is now wise for them. And, and we are much more structured. We are much more structured yes. in terms of our, 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 our national security apparatus coming out of the, 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 even looking at the chapter 12 of the Commission of Inquiry report. We've made yes. some strides, a lot of strides, based on what, we, what, what I have been reading. Um, yes, so as, as I said, I, I don't think that the military will allow them to, to, to gain any school anywhere at any time to um, even think about 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 reviving those, that type of that type of um, experience that we all experience um, for the, the, the events of uh, July. What do but you? But we have to be always vigilant, and we have to be always on. Uh, of course. Um, one, can, one can never tell. But in the did did you testify in the commission of inquiry? Yes, I did. I, uh, did, I did. And I I, I, I always tell somebody. Um, the way I was cross-examined at that inquiry, one would have thought that... Uh, you were on trial. 
it was Joseph Tony who led troops into the parliament to take over the country. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, out of the, in reading the 1,500 pages, um, what stands out to you in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the inquiry report? Well, I think, I, I think, I think the inquiry was, was, was good. Uh, and let me say that, uh, you know, I want to say before I get to the, to the report and the inquiry, you know, um, this is yet another example. You know, we, we, in Trinidad and Tobago, it seems to be fashionable that we have commissions of an inquiry. A lot of money is spent to pay lawyers and 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 and, and the commissioners well and said. to get stuff and so on. There's a nice report. Mm -hmm. It is laid is laid in the parliament, and and that's the end of that. Correct. And this report seems to be following. I see. I, I that, can't agree with you. That, and I can't view. agree with you any better. Although, Mr. Mr. Simmons, um, former Chief Justice of Barbados, made some very um, good recommendations. He did. And you know, um, today I saw, today I observed, I saw Mr. Embassy again working and, and, and doing his bit. I saw Mr. Dennis Makumi, um, Elena Reed somewhere. I saw the police doing something. Um, you know, People doing these things in a sort of haphazard sort of... Ad hoc. Ad hoc. Sort Agreed. Of slash, kind of way, yes. Know? Very uncoordinated. Which is, which is very, very uncoordinated. Very, very... But you see, the point about it, my friend, is that, you know, it is the state. You see, a lot of people see, well, you know, either NAR thing, man, them, they, 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 they take where we cool and they take where we 10%. So let them, let, them, let, them, let them feel a little bit of pain. The point about it is that they attacked your parliament. They attacked the place which is the seat of our democracy. And the, 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 the entity to respond is the state. Correct. You know, the state has to get involved in ensuring that this event is not, does not fall off our members. And it is forever etched there to forever remember that this is our parliament and it has to be cherished. But you because know, if we want to go the democratic tradition, we have to have a parliament where people can go and talk and quarrel and fight and, well, not fight, but uh, when I say fight, I mean verbally. Yes. Um, and, 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 and make sure that they come to some agreement about issues. But you know, you, when you in, say in a, in a, in a when you say the state, that's a very very important thing. You know, you you say, and that's something that a lot of our viewers and maybe a lot of young people may say. But what does he mean by the state and the state well, as opposed the to the government? Is, but the state really the state and truly, from a political science perspective, the state and the government are two separate entities, and it's uh, the, the government does not exist without the state. And we are first and foremost a state before we are anything else. And, you know, I would believe that when you talk about the state, and, and, and you know, the state also is the constitution of our republic, but the, the, the guardian of, our, of, of, of the constitution and the guardian of our state is, re is really and truly lies in the presidency. And therefore, this scenario, this, the, this, this memorial, this commemoration, this observance of, uh, of that collapse or that, that, what I would say, that, that breakage in our democracy should really come, yes. should really be coordinated from the office of the president. And it should, it should come down to all of the different arms of the state, the police, the parliament, the, the who, yes. you know, all the police, the parliament, the regiment, um, and then the, the people all becoming a part of, 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 of whatever the commemoration is. I mean, take into consideration, you all were released on Emancipation Day. So therefore, in Trinidad and Tobago, emancipation should be more than just the freedom of slavery. Emancipation should also be uh, freedom of democracy. That is how I, I celebrate emancipation because it was the day when I was freed from the, from, from the terror. Of, 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 the, of the Muslims and I, so many of so the, the country was free from the terror of the Muslims. You know, but I take your point. You see, the state, I, I, I see you, 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 you trying to give a role to the president, but I don't know the president of you, as you know, in Trinidad and Tobago, the very ceremonial. 
and uh, that, that therein comes in our need for and, constitutional and I, I reform. The, the, the president can command um, the government on how they should, they should, they should, um, they should, they should. Come but she should. <laughs> the president should be able to not, if not command the government, the, the president should be able to inform the parliament and inform the uh, because at the end of the day. The, the, the two presiding officers of the parliament, especially the speaker, um, is the administrative head of the parliament. So therefore, I am not saying necessarily command the government, but command the parliament, because uh, she's head of the parliament at the end of the day, because the parliament is... Yeah, uh, but, but at the end of the day, remember, the, the, the people who ultimately call the shots... It's government. ...on how... The government. Yes. So <laughs> you know, Mr. Tony. So this ultimately, the, 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 the matter rests on the lap of the government. And, um, you know, I, I am shocked that, you know, what has the government said about this? Nothing. Over the last couple of years. Absolutely nothing. They behave as though it, it, it never existed. It never existed because I find that, they were I never find part of it. You, Mr. Tony, at the end of the day, the people that are sitting in our current parliament don't have a serious appreciation for what happened on 27th of July, 1990. And I say this without well, fear or favor. That is clear. I, I, that is clear. I, and I say that as fair, without fear or favor. And I think it is very callous on the part of parliamentarians today to, 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 to walk around with their head up in the air and their chest out just like the Muslims would have done because they are members of parliament and because they've won elections. You all did not win an election, only win election. You all suffered at the hands of terrorists. But, you know, I, I have to bring the show to a close because we have a really nice yeah. ending. But I want to, at some yeah. point in time, continue this conversation with you, maybe uh, in a broader spectrum. And um, yeah. one, we, could, we could sit down and, and organize a forum where we can discuss yeah. this even but more. Certainly, certainly, uh, certainly I, I would want to go into some greater detail about what Mr. Simmons, Justice, Chief Justice, former Chief Justice Simmons recommended. But then, because, you see, whilst you have Mr. Eversley trying to do his bit, you have the police trying to do their bit. I saw where a former parliamentarian wrote a book. This is a man who sat in the parliament 2015 to 2020. <laughs> he was a member of the parliament, I think, for that was era. He said nothing for five years about the events, but he comes in 2022 and he writes a book. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, it, 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 it doesn't add up. I don't, I don't understand. The, a lot of people what, are looking for attention, but the police, the police, I think they had some show today at or something of the sort. But this document, some, we need to discuss this document. This document needs. Yes, a, we need to. We need you know, to. And, and, and that document, that document, um, um, has a good roadmap. Yes. If I may use that word. Well, let um, us aim for September. A good roadmap on how this matter should be approached. Agreed. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Somebody has to sit down and say, this, this gentleman has made some very good recommendations. Let us implement it. Well, um, I want, let, let's discuss uh, putting aside a day in September. We, we could even look at the observance of Republic Day. And um, I will reach out to you, and we can put together a, a greater forum. And let's dig yes. deeper into this. But I want to say thank you for joining, joining me tonight. Um, we did get a chance to, to hear your side of things. And uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna break ground when we, we go deeper into this, this, this discussion in yes. September. I think we should, go, we should go into some discussion on the report. That's something that I will we'll definitely be doing. So I want to say thank you for joining yes. me tonight. And um, as we close, um, I close with, with this closing. Uh, you know, the, we, we are lucky people. <laughs> and, um, I think the government, I think the government has to do that is, that is my thing. Yes. The government is not serious. They have so no appreciation for what, what, what you all faced. And they probably would never ever in their lifetime I, have no something I, like that happen to you all. So go ahead. I leave you with this ending, ladies and gentlemen.
God bless our nation of many varied races. May we possess that common love that binds and makes us one. Let it be known around the world that we can boast of unity and take our pride in our liberty. God bless our eyes of trust. Big beauty rare, or flaming point Sienna, and shady mortar, the warm and sparkling waters that break upon shores beat out a tune that seems to tell we take our pride in our liberty Come on.